Good morning. Today is a work day. <sighs> so what we're gonna do is I have this quilt, a t-shirt quilt, you know, they're my favorite. And <laughs> I'm gonna get the back fabric ready, but I also need to put stabilizer on the shirt because Somehow, this person did a wonderful miracle. I don't even know how the hell she put the quilt together. Because it's pretty straight, it's pretty clean. But she did the t-shirt quilts without stabilizer. And so, I don't want to quilt it without it being stabilized. You see I put the back fabric on right there. I think I'm going to have to move this room around because when I put the camera on <laughs> in certain angles, the windows really ruin the visual effect because the camera focuses based on light quality too so let's proceed we're gonna go ahead and put interfacing on this beautiful quilt that t-shirt quilt that my client did not put interfacing on so let's see how we're gonna do this um, I buy a real light interfacing like how light it is you can even see through it and I use this to put my batting together and it's so light it tears open real quick. So I'm going to put the quilt on top, turn on my iron and start ironing that interfacing on the quilt top. So this quilt top was really beautifully made. You could see um, it's nice and square but she did t-shirts without interfacing. Can you believe it? She was a new sewer and she didn't know that she needed to do that. Um, but um, Look at that. She's beautifully put together, but something to consider, this is the back without interfacing. So I'm gonna iron interfacing and that's what I got that big spool for. So I'm gonna lay her down. The reason you need interfacing for t-shirt quilts is because um, it's, it's cotton and polyester and it stretches a lot, a lot. So you can see that I'm like gonna cut myself several pieces of this interfacing because I'm gonna try to see if I could iron quickly. I love interfacing really. I already have my iron getting hot. And I'm using fusible interfacing, so you know. And what I'm just wanting to do is stabilize this quilt. I'm not really worried about the seam. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and flat and stabilized so that when it's on the long arm and the long arm is going over it, it doesn't stretch. And then while I'm doing this, I'm trying to make sure that I don't stretch or pull it in any way so that it's nice and flat. So now we're gonna do row two um, of the stabilizing. I wanna make sure that the shirts are nice and flat before um, I add the interfacing. I'm just gonna lay the interfacing in. I already trimmed my and we're facing off like you saw earlier. And I'm just gonna keep layering. I wanna make sure that the shirt is nice and flat before. And I, I am going to let it overlap a little bit. So this is a design that I was gonna put on the quilt. I'm on my last row. You can see she's 
peddling but honestly the fact that this person doesn't even know what they were doing and they didn't even they pieced it together without interfacing is like magnificent this quilt is pretty great and she's just feathering here that can be fixed with ironing and um yeah she's quilting really pretty I'm sure she doesn't know how to put borders, but hell, she did a great job. For never doing it before. beautiful roll of binding um, I do have tutorials on how I did this but I roll it up for myself and I use these little tiny pins they're applique pins to kind of put randomly so it holds itself together and it doesn't fall apart on me when I'm unrolling it so let's start sewing putting binding on this quilt I have trimmed it already I am going to hand stitch this with my brand new thimble. Look at thimble. I like to give myself a bit of a lip. Just folds better, I think. I also think that my foot is not a quarter inch seam. Hello there. I did have, if you could see here, some issues with fullness right here. So I'm trying to spread the fullness out in such a way that I don't get a pleat. If it is a problem, I will get my iron out. And then just kind of pushing the fabric down. Then I hold the triangle and have a fold and make sure that the fold is even to this seam and then start sewing here. I 
make sure that it's lined up. Yeah, pretty good. Whatever your binding is, this is what you need to make it overlap. My binding is two and a half, so I'm gonna have it overlap two and a half. And you want it to overlap. So this end should be two and a half. And this end should be two and a half. I don't know if you could see that. If you have that, then you can cut this off. So what I do is I'm a, I make a triangle here. And if you need more room to work, make yourself a triangle like this. Now in making myself a triangle, this is where I'm going to draw My triangle line and then this I like using Elmer's glue and tacking it down but sometimes I'm too lazy to get my iron so then I'm gonna open this and where I drew or have that line of that triangle that's where I'm gonna sew so I'm gonna go on the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew that triangle down so you can see right here I marked it on this end but you're gonna do it on the reverse end, okay? That's why you want the fold. I usually paste Elmer's glue here. I have a video on how I do that. And what happens is it gives you the ability to just, it's tacked down already for you. You line it up and then you go here. So you can see my triangle right there where I fold, did that fold. And I'm gonna use that fold as a guideline. See if it's nice and flat. Once I see that it's okay, I could cut this flap off. And then go ahead and sew this. So I tend to check these little corners. And then also I tend to check if my binding is sewed on right. My cookie thinks that she owns this room. Huh? Yes? Is that a thing? So I'm gonna probably move this quilt and start just start hand binding somewhere. Doesn't matter where I start because I just start turning it over but I'm gonna get my thread ready. So one of the things I do when I'm doing binding is I make a uh, I get all my needles ready so I call this a thread bed <laughs> a place where I put all my needles and thread so a needle bed that this is my own little thing um, what this is is a toilet paper roll that I sewed um, batting on what happens is I used to do this with a piece of fabric and then the thread would get all tangled and this way I found really works where the needle you Put it in the bed and then you wind it and I made little sections like four little beds and this way your thread doesn't get tangled but when I start binding on a, um, a quilt I get all my threads ready and put them in their needle bed this is called the, I call it a needle bed okay this is my thing um, it really works I'm excited about this thing so that's what I do and then um, I just start binding so let's go binding. <laughs> 